Hello, my friends. Welcome to St. Michael's Church here on Hamilton Mountain. I'm the Reverend John Forbes. Welcome to worship. We begin today with the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and we begin with verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Well, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet who come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that though believing, you may have life in his name. This, my friends, is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, happy Easter to you. Yes, it's a week later, and it's still Easter. Good 50 days of Easter to celebrate still, so enjoy your chocolate and your bunnies. But mostly, let's enjoy Jesus. Have you ever thought about uh, your calendar? You know, I have one on my cell phone, I have one on the wall, I have one up in my office. Uh, there's lots of calendars around. Lots of different kinds of calendars too. L lunar calendars, like the ones we use to decide on when Easter is, or liturgical calendars here at the church so we can change the colors and remember those who have walked before us in faith. Some hang on to old calendars, like a Julian calendar, even though it runs a few days behind. In the Jewish calendar, it's the year 5,781. In the Hijri calendar, for Muslims, it's the year 1443. There are many different kinds of calendars. But we organize ourselves around these things. We measure time, says and it says something about us and what we value. How many of you use a 24-hour clock? Maybe for work. Well, Jesus appears on the first day of the week. His appearance to Thomas is also happens on the first day of the week. It is the day of worship where we gather for a meal and prayer. And yet, many of us say that Saturday and Sunday are part of the Weekend, like the Brits say, weekend. What is on your calendar then? Does it start on Sunday, like mine does, or on Monday, like the business world? What we believe about the world matters, though. It changes what we believe about the world beyond belief. And so we begin on the first day of the week. That would be Sunday. The disciples are afraid. Maybe someone will accuse them of hiding the Messiah's body so that others can say that he rose from the dead. The doors are locked, and right in front of them is Jesus. 
Peace be with you, he says. Shalom. Salam Aleikum. Jesus greets them all. He clues them in to the fact that this is a revelation. It's about to be sprung on them. God is here. The peace is at the heart of the matter. And by the way, you'll not die. Well, at least not today. Jesus then shows the wounds. It's a powerful moment of crucifixion. It was painful and hurtful and nasty and smelly and swollen. Jesus draws nearest to the apostles at this moment. He's with them. He is present. There is no doubt about the risen Christ. It chills me to the bone even to think about it 2,000 years later. See, it's only now near the end of John's gospel that Jesus is called Lord. It's his post-resurrection title, the risen one, the first fruits of them that died. Jesus gives the apostles and us what we need today. His vision of resurrection, his mission, just as God sent Jesus, I'm sending you. It's a priestly moment. Those who are baptized into Christ's life are baptized into his ministry. We may be jumping ahead to Pentecost a bit, but the Holy Spirit is present, a gift from God. It is the new creation, the new Adam, Eve, the way in which we have been transformed in our lives. Well, I was given a wallet when I was 11, I think. My grandfather used to use tools uh, to carve leather. My dad does it as well. I've had several variations of this wallet over most of my life. For my birthday that year, my grandfather gave me this wallet that had a crisp $5 bill in it. 1984, that was a good amount of money. In the wallet was also my birth certificate. My grandmother said it was, well, it was time that I hung on to it. It was important, and I should be careful never to lose it. I pulled the card out, and, and it had a different name on it. It said, Jonathan Lee Tillett. But my last name was Forbes. My grandmother told me that mom had been married before and that that man, well, he was a terrible person. His name was John Tillett and he had hurt mom and, and made her very sad. So she was glad that mom was married again and that Bruce was a good man and he would always be my dad. Well, I remember being broken open that day, not knowing what to do or even how to process it all. I was confused and betrayed, hurt. There was a whole lot of big emotions. See, it took me a lot of time to sort that out. It was only later when I was able to realize that Jesus was the one who showed me what love was supposed to be like, that I began to put the pieces together again. In some ways, I still am. I imagine that it'd be something like that for Thomas. He was a faithful follower of Jesus. And yet Jesus appears to the apostles. And at that moment, they understand finally that the things that Jesus had told them are true, actually true. But they, but they didn't believe and they're not going to believe either, at least until they see the wounds. See, Thomas missed the point. He missed the moment, actually. He makes a big deal about throwing his hands into the wounds. He wants proof like the others. Jesus comes back, and the Lord invites Thomas to place his hands into those wounds. He's invited to change his mind. Does he believe? Of course he does. I love the fact that Thomas never does actually feel the wounds. He doesn't need to. He just believes, like the others. 
Doubting Thomas may have doubted at one point, but, but never again. This is the most powerful gospel story in my life as well. Well, I may have doubted at one point in my life whether I was loved, I have never doubted again. You see, God offered, and I appreciate the chance, but it was not necessary because I believe. My God and my Lord, that's what Thomas believes. It brings him back in line with all the others. It offers us strength, too, as we are part of the covenant people in the new creation. Now that we believe, Jesus has words for us all. A beatitude for those who come after. Blessed are those who do not see but have believed. Jesus is with us at the very end. And so we confess our sins, my God and my Lord. We acknowledge that Jesus was crucified and live into the new life, the resurrected life, the life we live in the here and now. Thomas may have had doubts. We may all have doubts in this life. Jesus offers us the wounds to see. But thank you very much. None are needed. My God and my Lord. I believe. Amen. Alleluia.